Representative Lori Stone, and I serve Michigan's 28th House District, which includes the west side of Warren and all of Centerline. When talking to residents during my campaign in 2018, and still to this day, one of the top concerns I heard was the unaffordable rates for auto insurance that only seem to increase. I'm no stranger to high auto insurance rates that many of the residents of our state have had to pay. I share the frustration when the renewal comes in the mail and you have to consider your options for shopping around for better rates. Most of us are dependent on our cars to get to and from work, to pick up our groceries, or to drop kids off at school. Yet year after year, these high rates have forced far too many of our families to decide to have to pay car insurance or put food on the table or purchase medicine and other things our families need. The 100th legislature, along with Governor Whitmer, tackled the no-fault auto insurance reform earlier this year. It has not been a simple or a quick process. In June, the governor signed Senate Bill 1 into law, which made sweeping reforms to our auto no-fault insurance system. The legislature has been working on auto insurance reform for several years now. However, when the legislation was first introduced, it was rushed to the House floor. We received it at about 7 p.m. in the evening. I spent roughly the next four hours reading and trying to digest the changes. I still have some reservations about the law. I will highlight some of those concerns and I still think they have some work that needs to be done on them. Uh, since then, many constituents continue to contact my office with questions and concerns about the law. That's why I decided to host this auto insurance town hall to kind of get some information out there, help answer questions you have, uh, and hopefully get the word out in the community. I also invited a couple colleagues who have been working closely with me on the auto no fault insurance reform uh, to share some of their experience and input. So let me introduce State Representative Donna Lewinsky from the 52nd House District representing Washtenaw County. Representative Lusinski is the Democratic Vice Chairperson of the Select Committee on Auto Insurance Reform this term. Uh, and she has been a leader on this issue. Also with us tonight is State Representative Rachel Hood from the 76th House District representing portions of Grand Rapids. And I appreciate you guys coming out of your way to come and share your experience in our community. I've also invited some community partners to add their voice, experience, and unique perspectives to this panel. Stephen Sinus is partner at Sinus Dramas Law, um, and he represents people who have been injured or harmed by negligence and wrongdoing. He's also an adjunct professor of the Michigan No Fault Auto Insurance Law at Michigan State University's College of Law. And he is also the Associate Legal Counsel to the Coalition Protecting Auto No Fault, or CPAN. Tim Hasta is the Neural Restorative Provider. We also have um, a, a car accident survivor to share their experience, um, as well as a care provider. Um, some very um, important perspectives to have when considering your options. Um, I'd like to start with the timeline because while the, the law was signed back in June, a lot of people thought, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna call my auto insurance and I'm gonna get my, my discount, I'm gonna get my deal. However, we know that laws take a while to implement. We, there's a lot of pieces in place from auto insurance to government departments, that um, have to make sure the pieces are implemented correctly to, um, to be successful. So in order, well, let me tell, start with immediate effect. So once the law was signed in, uh, back in June, um, there are several things that people have been looking for 
that are now in law and protected and will continue to um, like look out for us. So one is the Fraud Authority, which was instituted by Governor Snyder to address reports of fraud, but it was signed into statute with this law, meaning that it will continue to investigate claims um, and you can file complaints online via email and there will be a manned phone line. That is a rare thing to pick up the phone and get another person to answer your questions and to file a report. Uh, and this is a very important cost control method. Um, fraud is one of the issues that is impacting the cost of insurance. Another piece is the independent medical examiner who reviews the treatments prescribed by claimants, doctors, um, to make determinations for insurance companies relating to claims. Language was added to ensure examiners are knowledgeable and experienced, that they meet medical specialties of the claimant and prescribing doctor. Most of their income must come from other sources than insurance companies. And this is intended to allow for the actual independent evaluation. So no longer is a podiatrist going to be used to evaluate a uh, traumatic brain injury or uh, Hold on a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Woke me up. Um, so we have hopefully uh, removed some of the bias when looking at that. Uh, we, a big issue that I hear about both in the news and from people are the Michigan catastrophic, catastrophic Claims Authority and its transparency. You know, there's there's lots of speculation about how much money is out there. Are they hoarding it? Should it be rebated? What what's going on with that? And part of that concern comes from a lack of transparency. So we there are oversight bodies, but how come we don't know? How do how do we know how much is in there? Where is it going? What is it used for? And when do we get another rebate? Right. So this law makes the MCCA subject to routine audits every three years, which will be reported to the state legislature, as well as being available online to the general public in general language. So not just something, an actuarial table that it takes a professional to analyze. You should be getting a report every three years that you can go on and look at and, and they should give you a reasonable explanation of how the funds are being utilized, how funded is the um, authority. And just so you know, upon taking office, Governor Whitmer, hearing this from voters, asked um, for an audit to be uh, taken place. So she has a baseline knowledge and that information was just shared out this week, if I remember. Um, the, uh, next is reentry penalty elimination. So we know there are some communities and some individuals that had such astronomical insurance fees that they just have not been able to sustain them. And when you have to make certain choices on when their budget or money is going, that they've allowed their insurance to lapse. And we don't think that you should be penalized. We want everyone to be covered. And so it's important that we don't throw fines and fees in the way that could be a barrier to entering the insurance market again. We have until uh, January 1st of 2022 to um, get everyone back onto insurance. So if you're hearing people in the community, please let them know that there's a pathway to get back into the market. July 21st, 2020 is the date everyone's waiting for. That's when the actual rate reductions are going to be available as part of policies. July 1st, 2021 is when the insurance plans will then have um, a cost saving measure with a new medical fee schedule. And so hopefully we will have to see what that looks like. But it should keep rates consistent so that, you know, when you go in for um, a CAT scan, it you know, costs $1,600 and 
And if you have a car accident, it's not all of a sudden costing costing six thousand dollars. So hopefully that will be a cost saving measure as well. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Representative Uzinski to talk about some of those cost savings that you're looking forward to. Thank you. Oh, looks like I just need to set a mic. So again, my name is Donna Lisinski. Um, so I actually grew up at 24 in DeQuinder, so just north of here. That's not my alarm going off. <laughs> I'm going to stand up so I can see everybody's faces. Um, so yeah, so I'm the select, uh, the vice chair. I'm a Democrat, so a vice chair is Republicans and minorities, the highest rank a Democrat can achieve. So I jokingly say um, I'm the ranking Democrat on there. It sounds a little bit more important. On the select committee to reduce auto insurance rates. So I'm very excited. I'm in my second term, and these are two first-term members here, um, Representative Hood and Representative Stone. And it's really um, a pleasure and an honor to serve with both of them. As we came out with uh, the auto reform, um, rates are going to go down. But what we want to be very aware of is that the rate is going down because the coverage is changing. It's not like you're getting the same jacket at Macy's, but you're getting it at 30% off. You're having to pick a different jacket, and that jacket costs 30% less. So when we're looking across the rate reductions, what we want to be um, very aware of is as the rate goes down, so does the coverage. So you're actually, um, where previously in Michigan, we had we all bought unlimited coverage. When we bought our when we bought our auto insurance coverage, everything for injuries was covered. Now you'll have uh, you have to make the decision in Michigan. Thinking ahead, if you knew tomorrow you were going to get in a car accident, which coverage would you like to have? All right, we never know if my you know drive home tonight is the night I'm going to get in a car accident or when it's going to happen. But what we need to be aware of then is thinking about that. If I get in a car accident tomorrow, what coverage do I want to have? So we will still be able to purchase our unlimited option. Next July, July July of 2020, you will be able to make these choices. So the insurance companies, um, if you call to get a new insurance policy after July 1st, after this summer, the insurance company will offer you all these different choices. If you just choose to renew what you have, you will just renew what you have. So if yours expires uh, in a year from now, yep, you can always call early. You can call in July and say, I'd like to change my insurance. So insurance contracts always allow you to change your policy part ways through. So these choices will be available in July. If you continue to maintain the unlimited coverage, the idea that if you get in a car accident, you will be cared for until your injury has reached its conclusion which means that if it's a broken leg and it takes 12 weeks to recover, you have about 12 weeks of coverage. If it is a traumatic brain injury or catastrophic physical injury, you will be covered for your lifetime. So that's what unlimited coverage means. Now, the next coverage at $500,000 says that you will be covered. I'm sorry, let me make this quieter. Um, I put it on in case we needed something. Um, the uh, $500,000 coverage, coverage means that you will be covered until you have reached the $500,000 limit for how much it costs to care for your injury, and so on. So then there's a $250,000 option. There is a $50,000 option if you have Medicaid. So if you have Medicaid, then you can choose a $50,000 option, and it will result in the one line on your bill. This will not change the line for collision. It won't change the line for property damage. It will change the personal injury protection line will go down by 45%. So 10%, 20, 35, and 45% reduction. Now, there is this option that you could say, hey, I have a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan, and so I'm just gonna totally opt out of having any personal injury protection. So if you have a qualified health plan and your health plan covers auto accidents, not all of us in Michigan, our health plans do not cover auto accidents in Michigan. 
companies that self-insure for GM Meyer, they don't cover auto accidents. So this is something you're going to be very, very careful with. You could completely opt out. So that means if you have an accident where you break your leg, your personal insurance will care for it. However, if because you broke your leg, you lose your job, and you lose your health insurance, no one will be covering anything, okay? You will not have any coverage under your auto insurance policy for an accident where you've been injured. If it causes you, if you choose to totally opt out and you lose your job because of the injury, you will not have any, any health care coverage for that injury, okay? So we just have to be very aware as we're looking at these choices and we go to make these choices it's been 40 years that we have been covered in auto accidents so as we make these choices. We have to be very, very careful. So, um, um, yeah. Well, so Medicaid. So Medicare um, is, you can't, that opt-out, it's one of the plans that functions as an opt-out option is Medicare. So Medicare would be a qualified uh, insurer. You would have to, yeah, you have to have Medicare Parts A and B, um, but it does uh, qualify as a, as a health care coverage that allows you to completely opt out. But we have to remember that Medicare covers what Medicare covers, and if your injuries are more extensive than the types of coverage that Medicare covers, is if you have a traumatic brain injury and need specialized therapies, and that's not covered by Medicare, you will be left completely uncovered. After after a, an accident. Thank you. Yes. Did you say at the beginning that right now we have to have unlimited? It's a law. Right now, uh, yes. For the last forty years, we've been an auto no fault state, which means every policy simply covered everything. Right. And so that's yeah. So that's where. Um, we did a couple of things. So your insurance policy covered every injury up to $500,000. And then after that, you went into the catastrophic claims group. And that's that MCCA line on your health insurance. And the reason that goes up is when they have too many claims and the fund gets depreciated or? So how it works is that, let's say, I always hate doing this, a no. good Catholic girl. God forbid the first, you three in this front row got injured in an accident. The fee for the NCCA that year says, well, we think it's going to take $100,000 to get you to the to your in, to, for your injury. We think it's going to take a million five for yours and three million for yours. And what the NCCA fee is, it looks back a year and says for everybody who was injured in the year prior, how much is it going to cost to take care of them through the end of their injury? And uh, that is the fee that's assessed. So the NCCA fee, that's assessed every year, covers the previous year's accident. And so depending on how that looks back. It's been going up every year. It has gone up and down. We So it has gone, uh, six years ago, we all got a refund. Um, it went down. The last two years it's gone up. It just went down um, to $100. It just went down by $88. Will be the, the new fee we're assessed, it will be $88 lower. So it goes up and down depending on the injuries and the projected cost of those injuries. But your statement is absolutely true. We have all felt that his has been going up at a rate that has not been commensurate with those injuries, which is why Governor Whitmer ordered the audit as soon as she took office, because she felt some of those projected costs for injuries <coughs> were not right and appropriate at that point, or there was something going on there. So your both things are true at once. All right, so some of the things that are different in the, in the um, auto insurance law now. Um, there is, the, there is the, the mandate that for eight years that there will have to be a minimum reduction for those different, for those reductions in coverage, there has to be a minimum reduction as we've talked about the 10, 20, 30, 35, and 45 percent must continue for eight years. It also created a rate approval process. Right now insurance companies they would file their rate and they got to use it the next day. Now their rate has to be approved by the state before they can use it. It also started prohibiting in law several non-driving factors in rate making. So gender, marriage, um, mar marital status, those type things are no longer allowed to be used in rate making. 
It established a permanent anti-fraud unit, something we have, we have needed um, for a long time. That fund we were just talking about, where the catastrophic care fund has, in, uh, has increased transparency. And um, there are also regulations um, to protect. So when you're a patient, again, that idea that somebody gets to decide whether or not your claim should be paid or you're allowed to get the coverage that your doctor says you need. And that puts in place in a process that more closely ties doctors that are related to that injury to it. All right, so for the next one. So, yeah, please. If that's that, okay with you, I'm not sure if you That third one that you have, does that include what people call uh, redlining? Let's go back one slide. So this is, Where by the way, thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, kind of. So redlining is the idea that um, there were, and there are certain parts that have uh, had, uh, you know, redlining in the traditional sense had to do with loan making and the federal government having a policy that you will not give loans to people of color unless they live within this area. And if you live in this area, only white people get to get the, get to get a loan, right? That that's redlining, and the, the federal government literally had maps that had red lines around areas and um, prohibited people of color from getting um, home loans in those areas. When we're talking about redlining here, uh, in terms of insurance, essentially those same areas were experiencing for the same driver. Two drivers, each of you have a speeding ticket, but you live in one zip code and you live in the other because you live in this zip code, you're literally going to pay five times as much as you are. Same driver, same, same characteristic, but you live in a zip code and you are paying five times as much. So that is not allowed any longer. So rates cannot vary by zip code. However, but, there's always a but, which is why we're still working and talking about this issue. Territories are allowed. As long as the territory is not a zip code, insurers can still rate by territory. So all three of us um, together have had discussions with the new director of insurance to say, okay, how are you gonna differentiate a territory from a zip code? And so she's having all the insurers, when they draw their territory, they have to overlay it onto a zip code map. And the second part, which is the most important part, they have to demonstrate, this is kind of three big words in a row, a rational relationship to risk to define that territory. So they have to actually be able to say that it's rational, which means it makes sense, that we drew this area because there's a difference in risk between these two areas in order for us to change the rate. So the rate has to have a rational relationship to risk. Um, and so it's a kind of answer on the redlining. We really, all three of us, um, really wish it had frankly just been eliminated, absolutely. Um, so this is really, really small, and um, I get a little bit vain about wearing my glasses, so if you don't mind, I'm going to look down instead of looking up. Um, what, thank you, um, what this is showing here is what has changed and what hasn't changed. So again, personal injury protection, that line that's been the highest for a lot of us on our policy, went from unlimited to where now you have to make the choice. If you're in an accident tomorrow, how much coverage do you want to have when that happens? Property protection didn't change, and, and I'm going to steal a line from one of my colleagues up here. Um, personal property damage is still at a million dollars. So we are still protecting our property. Well, now we will be protecting our property better than we protect our people. Uh, residual uh, liability insurance. So that means if you hit or run over something, uh, then it used to be 2040. Now it'll be 5100. Again, things cost more to replace, but people cost more to fix too. But that's going to go up as well. So property, we're good. We're good. We're protected. Um, and then your other coverage, uh, collision insurance, comprehensive. Those aren't touched by personal injury. So the type of car you have, how much it costs if you get an offender vendor, um, those those aren't impacted by this law. And then the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association. Theoretically, um, because there's going to be a new fee schedule in a year and a half that will change how fees are paid, we'll, we'll likely see um, some of those costs go down in the future. So we'll see how that works out. All right? Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
heard that uh, this plan has been characterized as like those percentages that you had in the beginning and the MCCAs as promises, not laws. No, it's a law. So we'll percent. go back. So we'll go back. I'll explain how it goes. So okay. if you'll go back to the percentages. Yeah. So that's, uh, let's take the 500,000. That's 20, oh, let's take it, I'm going to do that's the easiest. The 10% rate reduction. The way the law is written is that across the state of Michigan, let's say only this row right here, it's only, it's only the five, six of us who choose unlimited, and there's a 10% rate reduction, there's to be 10% rate reduction on average across the six of us. So that might mean I get a 30% rate reduction, and you get a 2%, and you get a 10%, right where it's supposed to be, you get 15, you get one, and you get one. But on average, across the six of us, there's 10%. So that's how the law is written. There will be a reduction, but it will be very hard to pinpoint unless you happen to be the person who gets exactly 10% reduction. It's on average. All the people in the state who, who choose unlimited, it will be 10% lower. On average, people who choose $500,000 in coverage will be 20% lower than what they used to pay for unlimited. But again, it's a reduction in coverage, so you're darn well right, your rate better go down. So that's what it is, a 35% rate reduction from what you used to pay for unlimited on average. But can, I, can anyone guarantee that you will get 35% exactly? No, the law is written as an average across the state. Who decided on these? Yeah, the Republicans. No, who decides? Who gets 2%, who gets 8%, and who gets percent Yeah, absolutely, Krista, that's a really good question. So um, there's a class of people uh, in professions called an actuary, mm -hmm. folks who are just number whizzes. I mean, these are those kids who are doing division in kindergarten, right? Long hand, long division in kindergarten. Believe it or not, we don't have a pay scale high enough in state government to pay actuaries what they're paid in private industry. So as the state of Michigan, we have one actuary on staff who manages contract actuaries who do this kind of work. So again, in the three of us have had eyeball to eyeball con conversations with the director of insurance saying, we're not comfortable with this. We feel that we should, you know, we should be doing this work. What um, she has told us is that to figure out whether or not you're getting 10, 20, or 35, the actuaries have created an algorithm and a formula that's gonna take all the rates paid by all of the people then all the insurance companies are going to file their new rates for next July, and then they're going to feed it into this algorithm and formula and see if it spits out that this has created these discounts. And the rates won't be approved unless the algorithm and the formula spit out that on average across Michigan with the new rates that have been filed and the anticipated number of people who are going to choose each bucket will result in these rates. Clear as mud? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to take you. So if you pay, you're going to pay high dollar coverage for the unlimited. Well, the unlimited, you'll pay what you pay today minus 10%. But you're not guaranteed that 10%. Someone will get 10%. Someone. But yeah. Someone might get 15 and someone might get 5, but on average it should be 10%. But here's the kicker, and, and this, is, this is the tough one, is that remember how we just talked about the MCCA fee going down? So the $188 for the MCCA fee, let's take the, the $250,000 one there. Because you're not choosing unlimited, you don't have to pay that anymore. Because you never get to take, you'll never be the person who's injured that year who goes into the pool. So you don't have to pay the MCCA fee anymore because you've totally lost that unlimited coverage. They get to count that towards your discount. Mm -hmm. okay. That'll be a big percentage. And that'll be a big percentage of it right there. So they're doing away with with the person with the fault. Like say someone runs a red light, yeah. hits you broadside, your insurance company's got to cover everything. So here's the trick. So and I actually, I, yeah, I, I did learn something the other day. I was very frustrated because, so right now, if I buy the unlimited coverage, right now I would think it's the same as today. If I run, i got to pick somebody else to run into because I think I've injured you twice already. <laughs> um, so if I run into you and you, uh, it's determined that um, you chose the $50,000 coverage and I chose the unlimited. Both of us are very injured. 
okay? So my unlimited is going to cover me. Your $50,000 is now going to cover you. So now let's say I was 0% at fault. So my unlimited covers me, I'm fine. Your $50,000, you run out, eh, whatever. You were at fault. Now, let's flip it. I'm 100% at fault. I have unlimited, my unlimited covers me. You have 50,000, your 50,000 covers you up to 50, and then you have to sue me. Well, I had unlimited for me, so I'm all good. And I've got a hoopty and a house that's underwater which means you're not getting anything out of me when you sue me, okay? And your insurance rates will go up because you got in the accident, whether it was your fault or not. Probably, but I've got a hoopty and a, and a house underwater, and so if my insurance rate goes up and I've already got a catastrophic injury, I'm just worrying about staying alive. So, um, you know, so that's, so there's going to be other lines of insurance that you're going to want to be thinking about. Underinsured motorists, you know, if you get someone with 50000 that's who you're, you are, you are going to be at risk. We're all going to be at risk now of fault because it, what used to happen, it felt like if I got in an accident, I was 100% at fault. My unlimited handled the whole thing. It didn't. My unlimited only handled me, but you had unlimited too, and you had unlimited too, and you had unlimited. So it felt like your unlimited covered everything, but it didn't. Your unlimited, this was a really hard thing for me to come to grips with. My unlimited always just covered me. It's just that everybody else had unlimited too. And so that's what the promise, that's what auto no fault was. We didn't start suing over fault. We didn't take the assets that each other had, had encountered in the lifetime. And we have to remember that sliding on black ice and bumping into someone is fault. We have to remember that, you know, someone coming up in your blind spot and you not seeing them and moving over a bit is fault. We have to remember that what now we call accidents are now called at fault. Okay? 18, 20, 22-year-old sons, can you imagine how many at faults I've had in the last seven years? Okay? That were covered by unlimited and other folks were covered by unlimited. They were no, never any injuries, but, but lots of bumps and scrapes. Okay, so I think I'm wrapping up. So, um, you know, that's where we are. We're going to have plenty of question and answer time. We started to eat into that, but I'd love to hand this over to Representative Hood. Thank you, Representative Dean. Okay, so just a fair warning. I'm not as adept at this yet as my colleague, Rep. Lezinski, um, along with Representative Stone. This is uh, my first year, but... Unfortunately, I have a little bit of personal experience to um, bring to the discussion. So, um, my job is to talk about unanticipated uninsured impacts. While most drivers are uninsured, we know that there are still a number of people who are not insured for whatever reasons, usually because they simply just can't afford uh, uh, policies for their, their vehicles. The Assigned Claims Plan, or the ACP, is the safety net created for individuals who are not legally required to be covered by an auto insurance policy. However, it comes with limitations, only offering $250,000 of coverage as of July 1, 2020, which is this important date that we all have to remember when considering our insurance plans and our coverage. The ACP is the last resort for, for individuals injured in motor vehicle accidents where no other insurance policies are available for the individual to find coverage. So those folks might be uh, people who use, um, excuse me, people who use ACP are not drivers or owners of non-insured vehicles. Rather, they are folks who are involved in an accident with those drivers and end up being injured. This might be kids who are in a vehicle who are dependent on their parents' coverage. So as a parent of young children, I have to be much more thoughtful about piling up a whole bunch of kids in my vehicle and taking them to a field trip, for instance. I really don't feel comfortable in doing that unless I have an additional million dollars uh, of coverage. Um, what happens if you don't have auto insurance and what happens if you don't own or drive a car? Um, pedestrians. 
if you're out for a walk or a run and you're involved in an accident, you will be put on the assigned claims plan. Bicyclist. I'm a bicyclist. I like to ride 50, 100 mile rides um, when I can. That's obviously not happening as much now. <laughs> um, and if you're a bicyclist, you're out, you get hit by a vehicle, um, you go to the ACP if you're not otherwise in covered by an auto insurance plan. Um, and this was the case uh, several years ago, about 14 years ago, when my husband and I uh, decided to go down to one vehicle. And we weren't quite married yet, but we were saving up for our wedding. We were both living and working pretty close uh, to each other. He was able to ride his bike for the spring, summer, and fall seasons. We were able to save on a car payment and car insurance and still you know, get to work and be good employees. So uh, during that time, as I mentioned, we were not married. Um, so he was not covered under my auto insurance plan when riding his bike to work one morning uh, he was hit by a vehicle. Uh, the vehicle um, caused his bike to twist under him. He was flown several uh, uh, several feet into a side street, and um, he destroyed his uh, fibia, his tibia, his malleus, which is your heel bone, uh, several bones in his feet, and uh, were it not for ACP coverage, um, and uh, the catastrophic claims fund, uh, we would be, uh, would have been bankrupted. Um, or his parents would have had to come and cover those costs. Um, thankfully, uh, because of auto no fault in the ACP, those costs were largely covered. Um, we, uh, he lost his job subsequently because he couldn't perform his work duties any longer. He wasn't able to, to walk until he had several surgeries um, to repair. We easily exceeded $250,000. There's no question about that. And as young people, this, this cost would have been a burden for the rest of our lives without auto no fault. Um, thankfully, because we had those resources, he was able to get the care that he needed. Um, it took about uh, three years for him to be fully back on his feet, several surgeries later. And today, um, he is doing great. He has a little bit of pain, but he works really hard as a brewer. We own a business. He's an employer with, uh, with 40 employees. Um, and, you know, we have, we've had a lot of opportunities, like, allowing me to run for office and, um, and different, different things like that. Um, but this, you know, one simple accident like that for which he was not at fault um, could have destroyed multiple lives. And um, it's something to think about as we move forward uh, to discuss how we improve SB1. Leaves a lot of us vulnerable is my point. While, um, on the first slide, I uh, said, what time were these carrying grandchildren? Uh -huh. So I think the default is the, um, is their parent their, their automobile insurance. Who are not going to? My their parents' parent. auto insurance. If the parents are, for whatever reason, not covered or they have limited coverage, then I think it triggers the health plan. The health plan may be limited. Um, and then, you know, once you exceed uh, the available resources, um, your family is going under Medicaid and uh, you will be, you know, essentially bankrupted by the health care costs, um, depending on the, you know, the depth of the inju injury, et cetera. So that's why I mentioned, you know, as a parent and a parent who, you know, you casually pick up other people's kids, right? Well, you know, now I either have to have a conversation with the other kid's parents. Oh, you know, hey, how much are you insured? <laughs> right? Imagine that. Um, but proactively, um, if we can afford it, 
you know, the way we would have to deal with that is getting another rider, an additional million dollar rider, to protect us um, from a, a suit from another parent who, you know, rightfully so, is just looking for their child to be cared for um, and, and to recover um, at whatever cost. Uh, we would all want for that, right? So um, I'll share another part of the story. A couple of years uh, after my husband's accident, my sister-in-law was in a catastrophic accident in California. She lives in the mountains. Um, a semi-truck driver had decided to turn around on a two-lane highway at the curb on the side of a mountain. And uh, it was an icy night, dark. She um, tried to hit her brakes but slid right into the vehicle. Um, multiple fractures, uh, uh, both uh, her fib, her tib, her, um, sorry, I'm not a medical professional, so uh, thighs. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, uh, her hip, uh, a couple of ribs, um, a shoulder, and, uh, and her face were, um, were all fractured. Um, she was in intensive care in Reno, airlifted off the side of this mountain. Um, after her immediate physical recovery, uh, she then had to go into a two-year-long process uh, to sue to uh, gain back the, the, the financial cost of the accident and, uh, and, and injury as well. Luckily, that particular semi-truck driver was part of a larger national company, and so there were resources uh, to back up that suit. And <coughs> after two years of fighting in the courts and all of the you know, harassment and trouble of you know, working with lawyers and having to deal with uh, all of these delayed healthcare payments because they obviously didn't have the cash to pay for everything right away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they finally settled and uh, <coughs> they, were, they were compensated and compensated well. But there was a significant chance that that semi-truck driver could have been an independent contractor with little or no wealth behind his or her um, company and uh, she could have uh, uh, been responsible for all of those health care bills for her recovery. Um, so, you know, this is the, the benefit, the, the, the um, incredible, like, safety net that, that auto no-fault insurance was for the state of Michigan that it is not in other states. That's what I was going to say. We are the only state, the other 49 states do not have no fault. Mm -hmm. So had she had that accident in Michigan, she wouldn't have had to have sued or anything. That's right, although that dynamic changes now, uh, depending on all of these you okay. know, various factors that we now have to navigate. And I personally feel, and I voted no on this bill, because to me, I don't care if it's $200 and it went up to $220, my ability to rest easy at night, that if my family were to have a cat, a member of my family were to be catastrophically injured, that it would be covered and that we would um, have the resources that we need uh, to be able to address their care over the course of their lifetime, I'll pay, I'll pay a lot of money for that, <laughs> personally. Um, and I can't say that for everyone. I understand that, um, that rates are astronomical in some of these communities where uh, redlining has occurred. Um, so I have sensitivity and empathy to that. But we, we just lost this peace of mind and this assurance of our health and our well-being moving forward to save likely less than a $100 a 